Greetings and salutations. Welcome to episode 27 of the Bromby Save. And it's the fun summer transfer window. To be honest, it's not been that fun. It's quite a weird situation. So norm let me take so normally I manage in the English divisions mostly. Um and by the time you get to the Premiership, you're given quite a lot of money, even if you're a very small team, just because the TV revenue is ridiculous and you've got quite a big pull because you're in the Premiership and lots of players want to play in the Premiership. So so it kind of evens out. So when you're looking on, on when you're scouting players and you're looking for players to fill positions, their value sort of equals what you may be able to afford. But with a situation like this, I'm in the Champions League qualifiers. Um, I'm champions of the league but and so lots of players want to come to me because lots of players want to play in the uh, champions league but i cannot offer like anything like the wages or the transfers like budgets that they require like ridiculous so it's like being tempted it's like oh i'll search for a center back oh dejan loveron wants to join brilliant so they just want seven and a half million and he wants 60 grand a week. Hmm. I can offer you 10 grand a week and one million pounds. How about that? No. All right. So it's a bit, it's a bit weird. I think you just have to rely on loans a lot more. And we have made one massive signing. I've overspent, but I wanted him and I've wanted him for ages and I wanted to, well, let, let me just show you. Let me just show you. Here we go. Here are the signings. This season, we're about to play our first Champions League qualifying leg. So, as you can see, there's one big boy there. But we'll go through him. So, the first up is Kevin Mercer. He's Arsenal FC in USA. Um, as you know, I've been poaching the American leagues for young players. And he's just another really good player. He can slot in straight as my backup left back, really. Um, you know, the budgets are so tight that I can't really afford a decent players in both all positions like decent backups so i'm having to sort of deal with stuff like this but you know very good physicals he can still do a decent job there um another little cheeky pickup on a free next up we've got mike vassal again and weirdly every player that i've bought from united states of america i've had to send on an intensive language course to learn english i know sorry american viewers i know there's a there's a <laughs> how do i say this <laughs> There's a sort of thing that Americans might not be the most intelligent people. Is that... Mm, okay, we'll just leave it there. I'm hoping that only about 1% of my audience are American, so, so hopefully that it will just insult 1%. Um, but the fact they have to learn English is just ridiculous. Anyway, so here he is here. He's a defensive midfielder, um, anchorman with 17 long shots. So interesting. Um, but he's possible five-star potential, so a huge, huge, really good player. Really happy to have him in the squad. Um, a couple of teams want to loan him, but I imagine he's going to be my backup um, defensive midfielder. That's how bad the budget is, by the way, because that's what we're having to deal with. Um, next up, we've got Julian Green from Bayern. Ironically, he's another American, but I didn't poach him from America. He was He's a Bayern Munich youngster, um, been there throughout his career. <clears throat> had a very good season for the second team in Bayern Munich, which, you know, 10 goals, 9 assists, absolutely fantastic. Um, picked him up on a free. I've been tracking him for a while. He's a very good sort of versatile uh, winger, can play inside forward happily, both sides, can play up front if needed, and he's got decent finishing, so he can definitely do a job there. So very happy to get him. I've been tracking him for a while. Talking to tracking people, stalking people, Mikel Duland. I have been um, tracking, he's been on my shortlist forever because what I wanted to do is try and bring in Danish players, get some, build a Danish side, which is fucking hard, I've got to tell you, with no money to really push these other teams to get them. So I bought him for 2.8 million, that's his release clause. Uh, Midland weren't bothering. I've got, I know I've got a Midland fan um, in, in the, as a subscriber, so I'm, I tried to sign the other guy, I tried to sign, what's his name, Pisto or whatever his name is. Um, yeah, Sisto. <laughs> Peony Sisto, that's why I said Pisto. Um, but yeah, just way too much money they wanted for him. Um, it was more about sort of five, six million for him. <clears throat> but I did get one of the guys I really wanted to to get. So his name's Michael Juland. He's Danish, which is the single goal. He's four and a half star possible potential. He's um, a inside forward. 
two-footed, another two-footed player, which is just fantastic. I'm going to play him on the right-hand side, so um, we will be learning. He will be learning that role. Um, anybody can tutor him? No. Um, yeah, he's only 20 years old. 11 caps for Danish under-21 team. Very good all-round player. I think he's going to play a big part of our success going forward. And it's great to just have another Danish player. Um, he can also play central midfield, which is nice if we need to fill in. He's had a couple of decent seasons. Um, and we poached him from a rival, so that's always good. We've given him some money, but oh well. So, on the freebies, um, lots of just youngsters that just didn't get close to the team. This one was annoying <laughs> um, a few episodes ago. So I signed this guy, um, Sip Hamadia Baloyi. I think it was actually... It might have been my like, head of youth development or something that signed him. He's a very good prospect, but I, um, I could only offer him like a grand a week just to be a youth player because that's the rules for some fucking reason. Um so that it was really annoying, and he wasn't quite good enough. He's progressing well, and he, I couldn't get him a work permit. That wasn't happening either. So eventually, he just fucked off to Leon. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on him, though. I'm going to add him to my shortlist so I can cry when he's worth £50 million. Pounds. Um, next up, we've got George Needmeyer, who on paper looks a decent player, but he did very much struggle last season. The scouts don't really rate him. He was on quite a lot of money, I think 12000 or 11000 um, only worth about hundred grand, so I palmed him off to um, Brighton, um, which eventually I immediately regret because I haven't got a very big team at all, and I have no wages and no money to spend. So that's fun. One of the good things, though, is we did sell Tom Carroll. So Tom Carroll was bought in uh, mainly to play a slightly more advanced role, but that we never ended up using. Um, we picked him up on a free on big wages. Um, he had a decent season, but then because we changed formation, we loaned him out to Celtic. Didn't get much game time, but then we sold him to Villa for 1.5 million. So very happy with that. Josh Harrop, again, he was bought in as a sort of very much a natural winger. And then we started playing inside forwards. So <laughs> we made a bit of a loss on him, but we did manage to get under grand, so not too bad at all. <clears throat> and then Darlan, our defensive midfielder, another one I probably wish I hadn't sold now because I didn't realise the finances were so fucking awful that we couldn't replace anybody. Um, he's uh, So we bought him for 500. Yeah, he made 50 grand on him. Yes. Um, and the reason being is that I sort of made this money and I had a bit to start with. And then to get the Julian deal done, I needed to adjust the budget, which basically took all of my transfer money, all of my wages that I'd actually reduced the wage budget, uh, reduced the wages overall. So very, very much annoying. Um, so what's happening now <laughs> as we have a sort of Danish American team. <laughs> Look, I've got one, two, three, four five americans in my first team which is fucking bizarre that's never happened in well the history of time um but the two good things in as you'll notice is tuba akpom and joe gomez have both re-signed for another year i was so delighted this is probably the biggest signing of all is to get joe gomez for another season is is just fantastic so three seasons two and a half seasons for joe gomez this will be um Chubrak Pom's second season. He was brilliant last season. Tailed off a little bit, but very good. Yuji Ono, obviously, he's playing up front because he's a monster. Um, he had a fantastic season last season. 7.76 average. Uh, and I think sort of that's about it. As you can see, first team's okay. Um, Austin would play defensive midfield, but he's actually on international duty. And Jelic is is not registered um i find it he's got very weird stats this guy um he's just going to be a backup center back we bought him for 20 grand and he's barely played i just found him on my b team when i realized i had no money to spend if you look at my finances zero um and uh we are overspending so good good but the wages have gone down so the club's got nine million in the bank but they won't give me a penny i tried to ask right Moving on, so today we will be playing Lavidia. Anyone know where they're from? Any guesses? Any guesses? Estonia! Of course it is. So, we don't, haven't got that league um, loaded up. This is their key player. Come on, people. 
Is that this is that that's their key man, it's probably their only man, isn't it? Look. And he's wanted. Who's he wanted by? Them. Right, so their key man, their key man is valued at twenty four and a half grand, right? If we don't win this game comfortably, I'm going to cry a little bit inside. Tactics, we're going to start with what we finished last season on. Um, with the new players, we'll just need to bed them in. Hopefully, they'll do all right for us. Um, and let's just get into it. Don't fuck this up, team, please. Okay, Juland gets the... What number? Do you want number 10? Well, it's gone. Um, lucky number 18, because reasons here we go boys i want a comfortable f is it home or is it wait it's home four nil victory please right massive favorites one to six <laughs> they are ten to one i like to play like a northern irish team or something in the next qualifiers i don't know how many qualifiers there is right so they're playing a five three two probably very defensive probably long ballage I sh we should be able to deal with this we did do some restructuring um, of the backroom staff, um, some better staff in. I'll show you that after the game, if I remember, which I won't, but, you know, the thought was there. <clears throat> right, here we go. First game of the season, qualifying for the Champions League. Um, goals this season, retain the league is number one. <clears throat> I think we need to get like concrete that league down and say, look, this is ours, bitches, stay away. And I think even the board are expecting us to win the league, so great, no pressure. Um, and secondly is to qualify for the Champions League group stage. Would be immense, I think. But I just don't know how many qualifying rounds there is. Probably 600. Can't be any worse than the Europa League. Ah, oh, Baragi, no need to foul him, son. Where's me tea? I will be doing in the next couple of days um, a thousand videos, a uh, thousand video, <laughs> a thousand subscriber special, um, in which I'm not sure what it'll be, but it, oh no, um, it's definitely going to be a competition and a giveaway. Um, just to thank you guys for supporting me, um, but you know it might be something a bit more fun, a bit more silly. I was actually thinking of just showing you like some highlights of some of my. Um, most amazing looking regens while I talk about the competitions. It might be just something silly like that. But I'm going to give away some Steam games. So, you know, if you, if you like games, then make sure you watch the video. All right, come on, boys. Bright start. I'm hoping... Come on, boys. Jesus, don't... If we... Oh, mm, don't lose this. Don't nil-nil draw this game. We have to go away leg. That's going to be horrible. We need to put it to bed. Juland... Aga, look at the pace of Aga there. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't want to draw. Come on, we win this. We should be 2 3 nil up by now, and then we can rotate the team, bring on some youngsters. Right, Untersee, who's, who's a lot of teams are after him. Juland's through. Go on, Juland. The price tag is huge. They said I'd overpaid for him. I knew I overpaid for him. He was valued at like 1.4 million, so it's not like he was cheap. <laughs> Tubes. Um, you know, it's not like he's a valueless player but I knew I'd overpay for him but I wanted one of the sort of really good young Danish players and he's one of the best so that I, that I can afford so very happy with that Tubes gets off the mark on the first game of the season which is very good I think this is that empty bit of the stand is where the away fans are there's probably one guy behind there is there <laughs> no <laughs> Right, 1-0 half time, that's hmm, not good enough. I'm going to say not aggressive. Um, I'll just say, okay, yeah, there's room for improvement. I don't want to go in with a little, like a one goal lead or something. I'd much prefer to get in there with a bit more security. Um... Need to check Julian Green. I know he's right-footed, but does he have a left foot at all? Okay, so he's he's close to being two two-footed. That's good. So we can base. I'll play him anywhere I fancy. Um, Hughes Arga. Hmm. <laughs> the ever. I'm just not going to do anything. The never-ending 
saga of how to get Hugh Zaga to play football. I'm not going to sell him ever. He's go. I'm going to make it work somehow. Right, we need like a couple of goals here just so the second leg's not awkward, I think. Tubes with the ball though on the left hand side. He's got the overlap coming. Baragi. There he is. Steams through. He's looking. Is he going to go back post? Near post. Owner's there. Penalty. Rotha. Could, looks like a handball. Foot up, apparently. <laughs> who's taking the penalty? No, no idea. Referee's jogging around. 22. Who's 22? Duland? No, that, he was 20, 18, wasn't he? 22. Not got a, not got a clue. It's Daniel Agar! Of course it is. Idiot. Danny Anker takes pens. Forgot about that. Every time I forget about that. Like an idiot. There it is. 2-0. One more, boys. One more. And then we can relax, please. Danny Agar steps up confidently. Just dinks it to the left-hand side there. No, Julian's having an okay game for his debut. 6.9. Um, gonna give House a bit of game time. I think we're you know good enough that we shouldn't shouldn't get screwed over here. Julian Green, I'll give him his debut. And Hulzaga at as a box to box midfielder. Can he play box to box? Yeah, he's alright. Box to box, good. Maybe that's his position. That's a little hidden gem. Right here come. Levadia. Oh, don't score. That is just. Jesus. That would have been embarrassing. This is basically like playing the Sunday League team, isn't it, really? Oh, Baragi's storming forward. He just keeps not going. Aga with a good interception. Don't tie yourself out, Aga. Ball over the top to Julian, the new man. Aya. Great ball to Barag. He's going to fire one across. Taking a bit more time. Does eventually. Julian. Yes. Debut goal. That's what we wanted to see. Yay. 2.8 million pounds. Bargain. <laughs> Even though I know that's not true. It's when you go and look at Midland and they, you, you see they've signed some fucking Brazilian wonder kid for under grand with the money you gave them. No. We're going to get... Danish players, good Danish players. It's not just about signing the best players. It's why I don't load, I never load Brazil and Argentina up in the leagues. Oh no, oh no, ooh, because there's just too many good players that you can just nick from there. So it makes it too easy or too tempting. If you don't load the leagues, you still get a good, like a smattering of good young Brazilian and Argentinians and. Uruguayans without it getting ridiculous right corner ball who's taking it Hulzaga into the mixer oh no is that did oh no just win the header oh my god the 5 foot 2 midget or whatever he is <laughs> deserves a goal though there it is 4-0 salmon like look at the leap happy with that well done boys Right, last five minutes. See it out. Don't let them have a shot. They've had a decent amount of possession, considering <laughs> considering we've had thirty shots. Right, long throw. Norgard. Oh, he just sort of kind of falls over. Go on, go on. Have a have a goal. Score. Our oh, house. Leave it. Boring, boring house. Right, Baragi. He likes a good dribble, doesn't he, old Baragi? Right, there we go. Could have a little chance. Go on, Nabber. Go on, Nabber. Nice. Nice. Look at the triangles. Ryman. Oh, lovely ball to the left hand side. Here it is. Ravi. Rave. <laughs> Rave. Oh. I think I think we deserve that. Uh, probably should have scored more, but uh, 
job done. I think it's safe to say in the first leg. What I was going to say. Um, yeah, so here's my staffing um, improvements. Um, I've still got actual place to go, but what I'm trying to do is keep the wage budgets down at all costs. If I find a good cheap coach or whatever, I will, but I'm trying to keep the bud every type of budget down. I've got m the maximum amount of physios just because that just makes it easier. Um, I don't need all the f a full scouting roster. I've already got very good scouts, so I've improved the ones I've got rather than just getting more for the sake of having more. Um, so very happy with that. Um, as I said, the finances are looking very good this year. I think we should run at a slightly less of a loss each month. How tall is Ono? He can't be more than five foot eight. Yeah, five foot seven. He's got a thirteen heading to be fair. <laughs> Twelve jumping reach. Right, and there we shall end the first episode. Um, a relatively quick transfer roundup. There was not a massive rebuilding project at all. Um, just just the the big signing. Um, next episode, there, so we've still got plenty of the transfer window left, but I just don't, unless we are forced to sell someone, um, which I don't really, maybe Aya, if somebody came in for Aya for 10 million, I'm, I'm, the board might just accept it, that's what I'm worried about at some stage, he's the only one that's really going to be plucked like that, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's, that's okay. If that happens, then obviously we're going to have to do some stuff. Um, it will be quite an interesting feat. Nobody actually wants him at the moment, which is ridiculous. It's not like he didn't play well last season. Um, there we go, boys. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Leave your comments below. Um, I hope uh, I, I forgot your name, but the Mittenland fan. I hope you like the fact I've signed your friend, Mikel Doolan. Sorry I couldn't get the other guy, but I tried. Like you, you tried in your game as well. It's just quite hard to prize him away unless you offer stupid money. And he's just not that good that you'd offer crazy money for him. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.